Bentley set to kick it off for Florida State. And we're underway. Gator, three yards deep. He will elect not to return it. So let's take a look at the Russell Athletics starting lineup for tonight. On offense, at quarterback, what a place to get your first start. But Ryan Clement, promise you, he's going to grow up very quickly tonight. He'll have to. The wide receivers, Yatil Green is the go-to guy. Averages over 20 yards per reception. And on the offensive line, Coach Keogh says his center, Casey Jones, is the best that he's ever coached at Miami, and he's been down there for 17 years. Jones in motion, but they go to Ferguson, hit in the backfield, and he's going to be knocked down for a six-yard loss. Tyrant Marion is the man who penetrated and knocked him down for the loss. Defensively for Florida State, up front, extremely tough, as you just saw. Reynard Wilson, second team, second on the team in tackles. The linebackers, finally they get Bush back. He's been injured. His was a knee. Todd Rebold back tonight. He was out for two games with an ankle injury. And in the secondary, the situation here, Marlon Green will start because free safety Sean Hamlet is playing hurt. We'll see him tonight, but Hamlet is going to have to have his knee scoped after the game. So a face mask on the play at five yards stepped off against the Seminoles. Ferguson hit at the line of scrimmage, breaks off a tackle, has five, has ten, cut it off at 13, and Sean Hamlet, who we were just talking about, number 18, who will have his knee operated on after the ball game, is the man who makes the stop. Ron, this is what they have to have. The Hurricanes need to run the football. Danielle Ferguson looks like he's going to be hit in the backfield by the linebacker, Daryl Bush, but steps out of the tackle, picks up good yardage. Now, this is a Florida State defense that's given up a lot of yards in the first few games. North Carolina State, they scored 77 points on, and it looked as though they beat them badly, but they ran at will early. They just kept turning the ball over. This time at the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of one. Sam Powart will step up to plug the hole. Also, Pennell Spain, number 96. As you look at Ryan Clement, and those are his numbers. He had to come in against VPI, and Collins was injured. 16 of 32, 255 yards. And he will be greeted in the backfield by Carlos Joseph, a freshman out of Gainesville, a fullback. Where's number 40? They go with Joseph, spins off one tackle. He'll take it across the 40 to the 42, and it's Wilson who gets off the bottom of the pile, along again with 18, Sean Hamlet. Talked to Ryan Clement yesterday on the field here as they walked through last night. He said, Gino Toretta gave him the best advice this week. He said, treat the ball like it's gold. You know, avoid bad plays. And he said, we have a chance to make some exciting things happen in this ball game. I like his attitude. I mean, he's ready to play. Mikey had dinner with uh, Gino this past week, and Gino said, first time I went up there and, uh, and played, I threw interceptions. Don't do that. Yeah, he said, you can't play any worse than I did. <laughs> Jay Ina was the first one to come out of a stance. Dead ball foul. Ball start on the offense. Movement side to the snap. It'll remain third down. They try to prepare for noisy situations. Miami's been in a bunch of these games, though, so I don't think that should affect them this ball game. They jumped early here. Mike, in the ball game that they had two weeks ago against the Virginia Tech. There, they got just numerous penalties for the same thing. Offensive penalties of people not being set, going in motion too quickly. Draw play, Ferguson, big opening. Boy, he gets whacked just shy of the 45-yard line, and it's going to be fourth down at about four yards. And we expect to see Mike Chrissy come on to punt it away. And we might mention, as there is a standing ovation for the defense, Chrissy 
has not been without his problems punting. He averaged barely over 32 yards a kick against DPI. And they have a defensive lineman, Denny Fortney, snapping. So we'll see how his snap scores the game goes on because he's going to be chasing Danny Canal around. Off the side of his foot and not a very good kick. This is going to go dead at the 37-yard line. That's only a 20-yard boot into that win. So let's check the starters for Florida State on offense. Danny Cannell, well, he played in this game last year, but he has another year under his belt, and quite frankly, he is the reason this offense is going so well. The wide receivers, it's a very good group, but Andre Cooper is the leading receiver. He averages just over 100 yards per outing. And the offensive line, well, it is a veteran group with the man in the middle, Clay Scheider. He's the leader and a very good one. Clay number 53, senior out of Tipton, Georgia. Florida State from that shotgun, and they set up a screen in the flat. Wow, what a hit. Earl Little came up from that cornerback spot, and just a blue. It'll go for a loss. Here are the starters for the Hurricanes. Kennard Lang, he was a preseason All-American. The linebackers, this is a very good group. Ray Lewis is the man in the middle. They say that he may be as good as they've had down there. And in the secondary, Tremaine Mack having to start tonight because of a neck injury to Dennis Scott. Canal on top and way too long on that pass. Cooper is the man that he wanted. Ron, Nick Ward, a freshman, is starting at the defensive back position for Miami, so they're going to pick on him. Now, he played high school football as a freshman and sophomore, didn't play as a junior, as a track athlete. They gave him a scholarship, but not until May. No one recruited him because they thought he was a track player. He's got his work cut out for him tonight. He does. Carlos Jones is the fellow that normally starts over there. Direct snap. Goes to Dunn. Breaks the tackle, and then he gets whacked at the 37. He'll take it back to the initial line of scrimmage, but now Florida State is going to have to punt the ball right back to the Hurricanes. A sword fight here early, trying to feel each other out. And the one thing about Miami, they got a lot of athletes that can run, so they can match the speed of Florida State. It's athlete versus athlete. There's nobody going to pound at each other. Gator is the deep man. Liss, driving kick. His longest punt was 55. This is going to be the longest now. Good heavens. He banged that one about 62 yards. So let's take a break. No score. We'll be right for Seager here at, uh, at Tallahassee. There were so many photographers out there, they literally had people directing traffic, making sure they didn't get run over by a horse. Hey, Ron, the first series, they really tried to protect Ryan Clement a little bit to get him into the ball game. They tried to run the football early, but that's got to be the game plan. Ferguson with a handoff on the slant, and he'll take it out very close to the 25-yard line. Peter Boulware, sophomore out of Columbia, South Carolina, comes over to make the tackle. Daniel Ferguson looks to me like he's at full speed. Ryan Clement wanted to go to Notre Dame. He said, I always wanted to go to Notre Dame from the day I can remember, but when I got time to, when it was time to go there, Ron Paulus was there, and I knew he was the heir apparent, so it came down to Florida and Miami, and he said, I just felt like Miami was my place. Well, he will, uh, as we said in the pregame, he will do a lot of quick growing up tonight in a, in a place like this. He will not play in a more hostile environment than what he's seen here tonight in his first start. Throws the pass and has it incomplete. Dropped at the 26, and let's check in with Mike Tirico. Mike? Ron, on the scoreboard show, we showed you the 40-24 to 24 Colorado loss to Kansas and told you that Coy Detmer played in portions of both halves, twice re-injuring himself, that time without contact. Word from Boulder, he will undergo surgery to repair the torn ligament. He is out for the remainder of the season. Ron? What's a shame for Coy Detmer because he's such a competitor. Yeah, and maybe that's what brought him back. Maybe he was too much of a competitor, Mike. Maybe right. Third down. The line to make is the 30. German loses the ball. It is recovered by Miami. What a great effort by Omar Roll, number nine, because that football looked like it was going to go to Florida State. It sure did. They're going to say that he was down short of the first down, and 
Rowe really gave up his body on this play and he limped off the field. So the Hurricanes will have to kick. Pressure and they're coming after. Gets it away and again this one's going to die coming into the win. Fair catch and now a flag is down at the 47 as Feaster had to make a running and diving catch. This is the one thing when you play Florida State you do not want to give them this good a field position because they do not have far to go for the score. Holding. So it's a holding call against the Seminoles. Shovel take a break. No score. 9.23 left in this opening quarter. Art Keel, the offensive line coach of the Miami Hurricanes, talking to his offensive line. Mercier, number 62 there that we're moving by with the camera. He is a true freshman out of Montreal, Quebec. Mike, this time last year, he was playing prep school football. Fishing, probably. <laughs> Actually, he's a skier and a very good competitive skier. Does trick skiing, fifth best in Canada a couple of years ago. Straight ahead with the handoff, Warwick Dunn. Weaving his way, breaks off a tackle, and he will be across the 40 and going to have a gain of about seven yards in the play. Danny Cannell, of course, is having a great year, and I talked to him about the Miami game last year because I really think he grew from that game. He said, I wanted, when I walked off that field, I wanted to absorb the sickest feeling I could because I didn't ever want to feel like that again. And he said, that's in my mind in this ball game." And everybody on that offensive line, everybody on the offense talks about his maturity in that last year. Pass over the middle, has it complete. E.G. Green on the receiving end, and that'll be good for the Seminole first down. Last year against Miami, remember these numbers, Mike? Three interceptions and one particularly early. And the Seminoles had driven right down the field, and he threw a bad interception. And it was a week later at Clemson that they benched him in the fourth quarter. And really, that's where he grew up a little bit because they told him, they said, we've got confidence in you. You are quarterback. We're going to call the plays to you. And they go to the draw play. Done. Weaving getting to the 45 and the Seminoles are in Miami territory for the first time tonight as Eugene Ridgely comes up to make the stop and also Lewis is there. Lewis I mentioned in the lineups tonight that Lewis could wind up being one of the best that, that Miami's ever had as you look at Ridgely and you know Clay Shiver said an interesting thing yesterday that he said we have to be careful. He said this guy is so good and so quick he can make the tackle on every play regardless of where you run it. Williams takes it right up the middle. Pooh Bear is close to the first down at the 42 yard line. James Burgess down in the bottom of the stack. Ron it's just a matter of time again till they challenge the fresh ward number 27. And Miami will try to get extra DBs in the ball game to give him some help, but he's going to be isolated on the outside against some pretty good receivers. And of course, Florida State continuing to use this hurry up offense. This time, Cannell goes under center with an eye formation. And you can see the defense of Miami creeping up toward the line. That's exactly where they went, Mike Godfrey. Mess him on the catch, and it is a Florida State first down. Well, they're getting a good cushion on the outside because they've been able to run the ball successfully. Now Miami has to try to stop the run, which puts the defensive backs on a little bit of an island. Earl Little out there against Wayne Messam. But you've got Andre Cooper, number one. He's the long ball guy they like to go to, and he's working against Nick Ward. Then breaks it to the outside. He will have another Florida State first down as he gets cracked hard by Nick Ward and Tremaine Mack was also there. And let's check in with Mike Adamley. Michael. Well, Ron and Mike, the only way to watch a Florida State game on offense is with a stopwatch and a calculator. Some incredible numbers here. For instance, their average scoring drive, one minute and 43 seconds. Average play gain per play, nearly eight yards. And then Florida State's 59.5 points per game is tops in the nation which is great unless you're the Florida State defense it is a concern for Bobby Bowden a double-edged sword the offense so good that the defense is on the field a little too often <laughs> and Mike we have already seen some real head crackers in this ball game tonight both teams want to get so involved Terry Monk has just warned both clubs and told them they have to get back beyond the restraining line Cannell on first down, deep over the middle, overthrown. E.G. Green is the man he wanted, and Tremaine Mack was trying to cover. 
Tremaine Mack did a nice job on coverage there against E.J. Green. They're just trying to spread out the field and work those receivers one-on-one -on -one in the secondary. Danny Cannell trying to get the ball to number 19, E.J. Green, but very well covered by Tremaine Mack. No score. Six minutes, 47 seconds left in this opening quarter. Done. Nothing. A tackle. He'll take it to the outside. Oh, what a comeback block he got. And he's inside the 15-yard line. Nick Ward will make the stop on him. And it's Andre Cooper, number one, I believe, Mike, who yeah. came back and de-headed a defensive you're, player. You're right. It was Andre Cooper who comes back to block Tremaine Mack, number three. You're going to see Andre Cooper. Now the good tackle by Nick Ward, the freshman, just trying to get in front of Ward Dunn. Gain to be 11 yards. And again, Florida State will not huddle. Mike, for your defense, how much of a problem does this cause as far as not being able to come back, huddle, and talk to each other? Out in the flat gun. They caught him in the blitz at the five, at the two, at the one. It will be first and goal, Florida State, as Tremaine Mack knocked him out of bounds. Ron, to answer your question, when you do not huddle, the defense never gets a chance to huddle either, so they, get, they really don't get a chance to encourage each other. That's number one. The other thing is the quarterback has a good view for 25 seconds because you're always going to line up in what you're in. So it gives the quarterback a tip. Yep, the guy who has already scored eight running touchdowns, Clarence Poubert Williams, has nine. Florida State's on the board. Well, Pooh Bear is using that 283 pounds that he weighed in yesterday to get in that end zone. It's a good box by Andre Cooper. You mentioned the one. He came back in that last run by Ward Dunn and made a key block. Scott Bentley in to attempt the extra point. Now flags everywhere. Illegal substitution against the defense. That's the other problem with the no huddle run. You get confused in your substitutions of getting people on and off. And even, even though it's an extra point, you really sometimes end up sometimes with 10 on the field, sometimes with 12 on the field. You got to be really sharp in your substitutions. Mike, I'm only counting 10 out there right now. What do you get? 11. <laughs> <laughs> Bentley with the extra point right down the middle. So we'll take a break. And we look at Pooh Bear scoring one more time. 6-12 left in his opening quarter. 7-0 Seminoles. And he will kick it away to either Gator or Jones. This one is returnable. This is Jones at the 10. And he'll take it all the way out to the 31. Interesting story as you look at Clement coming on the field. Uh, of course, Bentley is from Aurora, Colorado, and uh, Ryan Clement is from the Denver area. And Bentley said, sure, you know, I knew all about him in high school, and he had some great praise for him and talked about he thought he would wind up being a very, very good quarterback at Miami. But he also said that Ryan Clement's mom works at a sporting goods company, and he orders socks from them. And he said, I got some coming. I hope she doesn't send orange ones. Eric Harris in motion is coming to throw. Got his man wide open, Jamie German, and he will take it right up to midfield at the 49-yard line. Roll comes over to make the stop, but it's a gain of 17 yards. A lot of poise by Ryan Clement to try to answer a score with a score, and he's got some weapons on his outside. You match Daniel Ferguson against Warwick Dunn, and you match the receiver, Jamie German and Latell Green. They're two as good as you're going to face all, the country, all over the country, so he's got some weapons to work with also. Well, you look at Jamie German, number seven. He's now a junior, but when he was signed, he was going to be like the second coming. He was going to be the next Dion, except on the offensive side of the ball. As you see the running play, they go for a couple, and then Gator just disappears. It's Andre Wadsworth who makes the tackle. German, it would appear, is getting close to stepping up to that mark that they expected. But Mike, he ran at a, at a coach's camp in high school to coming out. A, a 4 1, like a 4 1 2 or something like that. He was the player of the year in high school coming out of uh, high school, and he reminds me a lot of Derek Stiegel up at Georgia Tech. Young receivers that are going to blossom into great players. 
Prince Williams is the setback this time. Second down. The pass. Misread there as Jatiel Green threw it behind him. And let's check in again with Mike Adamley. Mike, what do you have for us? Ron, we know it is quarterback you. Miami certainly has produced a lot of great ones. Who does Ryan Clement most resemble? Knowing the quarterbacks that have been in this program for the last 15 years and watching the, the Kellys and the Cozars and the Testaverdes, he most resembles to me Craig Erickson. He is a fierce competitor. He's got a tremendous amount of confidence. He's got a live arm. Uh, and he relishes challenges like this. Well, right now he's got a challenge. It's third down. And if he wants to keep this drive going, they need to make the 40-yard line. Pass knocked down and almost intercepted. Samari Roll came up to knock it down. Germany attended receiver. Just a quick three-step out. But Florida State's in a very sound defense for this play. Samari Roll just does that rolls up and knocks the ball away so not a good play for the quarterback to throw that ball against that defense Chrissy tries to kick it away from Feaster who calls for the fair catch and then runs away from it and now the ball is going to go dead down close to the 10 yard line 37 yards in the kick Catch NFL game day on Sunday when Boomer and the boys analyze the aching perfectionist, Troy Aikman, educating a rookie. And the Vikings' Robert Smith, long, strange trip. NFL game day, Sunday, 11.45 a.m. sharp. Well, Mike, uh, Miami has moved the ball. Maybe, maybe better than Florida State thought they could early. I still think it is very important for the them to get points in this first quarter. Well, if they don't, they're going to get run out of here because Florida State's capable on every play of breaking it for long gains or long touchdowns. Roy Dunn is on the bench, and Rock Preston, number 24, comes in at the tailback spot. And that's who they go to. Preston, did he hold on coming out of bounds? Yes, they say he did. A catch, and he's out of bounds at the 14. Florida State coaches talk about Rock Preston. They say he loves the game. He's a team jokester. He keeps everybody loose. Pretty good substitute to put in there for Warwick Dunn. Good hands, good concentration, bringing this football in for completion. Yeah, you take out Dunn, who averages 10.7 a carry. Rock Preston averages 9.1 per carry. That's not too much drop off, is it? And they say they have a great young guy in D. Feaster, South Carolina, back of the year. And you see the handoff to Preston. Comes over the right side, running hard, and let's go to Mike Tirico. Michael, what do you have for us this time? Ron, this McDonald's breakaway takes us to Berkeley, and Southern Cal may have two quarterbacks in Brad Otten and Kyle Wachholz. They're getting the job done. 13 touchdowns and one interception this year. This touchdown to Tyler Cashman, the Trojans up five. So the Trojans, Mike, don't seem to be too uh, distracted by what happened with them last week with the suspensions. Mike Adamley was telling us he watched practice the other day at Southern Cal, thought they were a loaded football team. Again, the tailback. And Preston, boy, you could, there is really some good hitting going on in this football game. You see guys break it through, and then all of a sudden they just disappear. And it was Ray Lewis who made him disappear that time, along with Kennard Lang. When you're good on offense, you're good because you have a good offensive line. This team was recruited offensive line-wise five years ago. Great experience. You look at 104 career starts by this offensive line compared to Miami's defensive line, young defensive line. Here comes the blitz. Florida State rolls the pocket, so they got single coverage, and they get it complete to E.G. Green, who's trying to break the tackle, and he's going to be stopped at the 37. Great play call by Bobby Bowden because when you are in the shotgun a lot, you like to get your quarterback movement and roll him out every now and then to change where the pocket and the quarterback's going to be. Rolls out to the left, and they had a blitz called, and a good, great offensive call against the blitz to E.G. Green. 7 to nothing. if you've just joined us. Florida State, we have 341 left in this opening quarter. And Pinnell going to go on top, looking for Cooper, and the ball almost picked off. Coverage by Carlos Jones, who did not start tonight. He was benched to start the freshman, Nick Ward. Carlos was beaten a couple of times in that VPI game. But the coaches do not want to give up on him. They're giving him another chance here tonight, and they're working Andre Cooper against him. Now, Andre Cooper has made so many of these basketball RC Owens leap 
leaping catches almost made this one against Carlos Jones. You remember R.C. Owens, right? He used to sure, draw it to him all the time. Yeah. The Flag goes down. Cadell swings it out of the pocket. It's Preston, and that is a nice open field tackle by Twan Russell, the linebacker, junior out of Fort Lauderdale. Miami has always prided themselves in having such good, quick, well, I mean, their linebackers can run, and there's a good example right there. Ron, you talk about quarterbacks here in Miami. John Stark, remember last year he was alternating. He's, uh, Mel Kuyper's got him rated as the second best quarterback, maybe coming out in the draft. He's playing at Trinity now, college in Chicago, and any high school having a great year. You got Thad Busby, who's the backup quarterback. Here. On the offense, didn't have seven men on the line. Repeat second down. And I think that Busby's going to be a great player here and a great pro. And then you've got Kendra who came in here as a high school phenom. So they've got so many quarterbacks. Uh, and of course, John Stark now, he transferred, so he's playing the Trinity. Not enough men in the line of scrimmage. We'll get into that more in just a bit as the pass almost picked off. And that was a nice job by Carlos Jones. He really played possum, played off on it, and then broke very quickly and almost made the intercept. Well, they're working on Carlos Jones now. I figured they'd work on the freshman, Nick Ward, but they're going to work all night because Carlos Jones, as you said, was beaten twice against Virginia Tech. But he really does a nice job with his left hand here deflecting the ball away from Andre Cooper. Well, this is going to be a holding call against Florida State, and the Seminoles are moving in the wrong direction on this drive. So with the penalty, it moves it back just short of the 13-yard line. And it is going to be second down in the line to make his all the way out at the 46. Canal scrambling just throws that one away. Threw it at the feet of Rock Preston. I don't think he was trying to complete it as Kenny Holmes was all over. It. Kenny Holmes may be their best defensive lineman here. But the problem with Miami this year is they do not have a dominating defensive lineman like a Cortez Kennedy, Jerome Brown, Russell Maryland, Warren Sapp. They do not get that. They're not getting that play out of their front four. So people are singling their front four, and they're able to get to their linebackers a little bit this year. They need play out of Kennard Lang and Kenny Holmes tonight. Mike, look at this. It's a third and 33, and look how the secondary and the linebackers are playing. They are in center field all the way back to the 35-yard line. Three-man rush. Canal has the ball knocked out of his hands. He can still throw this thing. Puts it in the air, and it's just overthrown. Messam is the man that he wanted. Kennard Lang was applying pressure, and the one who knocked the ball out of the hand of Danny Canal. Kennard Lang coming from that defensive end position, slaps the ball away from Danny Canal. Now he wisely picks it back up, tries to get the ball to Wayne Messam, almost had a big play, but penalties killed that drive for Florida State. Sean Liss, his last kick was 62 yards. And Miami's coming after him, and they block it right up the middle. It is recovered for a Miami touchdown. Trent Jones is the man who picked it up and took it into the end zone. That's what they needed in this ball game, Ron, because they need confidence. They're coming off a one and two record here. Lost tough game to UCLA and Virginia Tech. They needed success in this first quarter. You mentioned it earlier. They needed points not to get run out of here. A good special teams play by Miami. Trent Jones, of course, is one of the two deep men on kick returns, but he also was on special teams on the punt cover team and he got in and picked up the ball that had been blocked. Miami's short men out there right now for the extra point. But this, I think this is a circle the wagon game for Miami. This, they need to play well in this ball game because everybody's kind of down on them a little bit. And you don't expect Miami to be one and two. Expectation level so high. Bobby Bowden now trying to figure out that protection on the on the punt. What's uh, what, what awry on that? Well, a little payback for this guy, Tremaine Mack. You remember last year, Mike? He was the guy who snapped a couple of those balls that they had problems on their kick team. And so tonight he gets a block. Trent Jones scores the touchdown on special teams. There's some saying about payback, but uh, Tremaine Mack really just bursts through and blocks this punt. 
Another delay of game, as you mentioned. They were having trouble getting enough special team folks on the field because of the excitement on the sideline. And very patiently, Dane Pruitt is uh, lining up to kick this one, attempt it back beyond the 15-yard line. Bobby Bowden knows full well that in this rivalry, this ball club, Miami, for instance, in the last 12 meetings, Mike, Florida State has led nine times going into the fourth quarter. Miami's won six of those games. And this, Nobody has handled Florida State that well. No, and this has been a tough series for him. He is perfect. So we're tied at seven. As you look at Mac, and Mac, let's take another look at it. A redemption for Tremaine Mac, number three. You're going to see him come free, and it's just a busted blocking assignment by Florida State but you're right when you say Ron here's a guy last year that was maligned for a bad snap maybe a coverage problem also a blocking problem by Miami last year but he is able to come back in here start this year in the defensive back position and block this punt in the first quarter here recovered by Trent Jones big big series for Miami so let's look at this last series for Florida State they had three penalties Danny Cannell did fumble the football. He did pick it up and get the pass away, but they had a third and 33. Jeopardy that they got themselves in, and now all of a sudden, because of those mistakes, Miami's on the scoreboard, and we're all even again with 252 left in the opening quarter. And Miami's got enough speed and enough skill to match the skill and speed of Florida State. They may be one of the only teams in the country with the same type of speed. Florida probably has that same speed. Nebraska now on defense. Bobby Bowden chewing that gum a little harder and across the way. Butch saying, well, <laughs> we want to we want to win the first half or at least play even. Well, Butch Davis brought Joe Avizano to Dallas Cowboys special teams coach and so it paid off and he worked with their staff. Going to be picked up by Jermaine Green. And he loses the ball, but it goes out of bounds. It'll be Florida State's ball at the 18. And Mike Adamley, let's go back to you. You know, Ron and Mike, all week long, Bobby Bowden has praised Miami with good reason. The Canes have broken his heart too many times. Miami has handed the Seminoles its first loss nine times. Four of those times, it was their only loss, causing them four possible national championships. And a lot of tears have been shed here in Tallahassee. Miami's record, 10 and 3. Well, you know, you probably you would say that the Hurricanes with the team of the 80s the, the way they played the Florida State was two wide rights away from being the team of the 80s oh, you're right two field goals this time from the eye formation in the running play gun will be short of the 20 yard line Bobby Bowden said Miami's ticking they're just not clicking you know and uh, and Chuck Amato, their defensive coach, told us at dinner the other day, he said they're like a time bomb, ready to go off. They got great talent. Canell with the no huddle. Second down, the line to make is out of the 27. Done again. Up the right side. Sneaking his way out over the 30-yard line, and it'll be a first down plus about six yards. The Warwick Dunn came into this game tonight averaging 10 yards a carry. And he is off to a good start. A quarterback in high school. He was an option quarterback. Mike Carroll, all the upsets today. If you want to know where the big things happen today, take a look. That Texas Tech, Zach Thomas with an interception as the game was winding down. Big win for North Carolina. Done. Hanging on for dear life is Ray Lewis, and he will stop the play just across the 35-yard line. One of the things Bobby Bowden also will tell you is, after last year's Sugar Bowl game, he looked at his defense and said, we're going to have seven guys coming back. He didn't think those two juniors would go out to did. Well, they did, but they were down to five. Then three of the other regulars got hurt, and they wound up in a situation as Rock Preston just drops the football. But they had about one returner that had started last year at the end of the year on defense. That's another reason they've struggled on that side of the football. 
Injuries and new faces. Rock can't believe that he dropped that one, but just wanting to see where he could run with the football before he caught it. He had some space also. He would have been able to pick up five to ten yards. But that's what speed does to you. Draw play to Preston. At the 40, dragging a tackler with him to the 41-yard line. Now you come right back in. Punting again. Here's the draw out of the shotgun to Rock Preston. Trying to pick up the first down. Pooh Bear Williams leading the blocking. Now you're in the same situation. You come back after it again with Tremaine Mack. Let's see no, they're, in, they're in a punt safe. Yep. Oh, and he just booms this one. Fair catch is called for and made by Tony Gator. That's a 51-yard kick down at the 7-yard line. From one big rivalry to another, next week we'll be in Birmingham as Peyton Manning leads Tennessee up against the Crimson Tide. The Volunteers are number 10. Alabama is number 16. The battle starts at 7.30 next Saturday night. Birmingham, Alabama. Always a fun place to uh, witness a football game, Mike. Both coming off wins today. That'll be some kind of atmosphere in Birmingham. Crowd trying to get the Seminole defense fired up. Those Miami scrimmages from their own seven. Gator hit in the backfield. Check it, McMillan to hit in the backfield. And knocked down by Canel Spain. Spain already has three fumble recoveries this early part of the season. Miami coaches like McMillan, number 28. The young tailback that they think is going to be really special. Clock is now denied, and that is going to be the final play of this opening quarter. So that's the end of the first quarter with our score, Miami 7 and Florida State 7. Miami 7 and Florida State 7. Ron, to win this game tonight, you need play out of your front four. They need to own the line of scrimmage. So far in this ballgame, Miami with five tackles out of the front four and two quarterback pressures having the better of the game. Well, and that had the, the tackle position particularly because of injury and also youth had been really suspect in early games. But they have played well tonight. Setting in his own end zone. Clement, and he's got a man out there, and he had to catch it out of bounds. Jatiel Green, as the ball just kept drifting on Clement. Florida State on defense likes to cock the two defensive ends and really get pressure from the outside. And they're, they're going to get pressure on Ryan Clement on this play. They're coming from so wide. But he had a lot of time to try to find this receiver down the field, Yatiel Green, but just threw the ball out of bounds. Well, it's a good thing he threw it out of bounds because it would have broken their heart. They have just been called for offensive holding. And uh, it looks like Florida State, though, has declined the penalty. Because of where the ball's at, right. they wouldn't get many yards, so they'll just take the down. So it's going to be a third down. And the line to make to keep this drive alive is out at the 18. Trent Jones, the only setback. Zings it, too tall. Green is the man that he wanted. Capers with the cover. Now you've got Florida State's got Miami in the same position they had to reverse in to go for the punt block here. You go after him. You go right after him. Got a defensive lineman making the snaps in Denny Fortney, number 99. He's been chasing, playing defense all the time. Go after the punt. Got it away. Not a good kick, but Feaster on the run makes the catch at the 35, at the 25, and it will be first down inside the 23-yard line. Excuse me, Ryan. Sometimes you don't block the kick, but sometimes when you pressure a kick, you get the same result. You get a low-line drive, and that's exactly what Florida State was able to get out of that punt rush. 
Mike, as we're watching uh, some of the some of the things going on on the Florida State sideline, the first quarter stats: total yardage, Florida State 116, Miami 50. But the thing that absolutely blows me away: yards passing, Miami 21, Florida State only 30 yards. They have really held the passing game in check. You just figure it's a matter of time till Andre Cooper and E.G. Green become key players in this offense. Miami take blitz. They stay at home. Swing pass to Dunn. And he will take it to the 18 yard line. Quan Russell makes the stop, and Nick Ward might have been fortunate he didn't get a, a spearing call there as he put the top of that headgear on him on the ground. This is not as easy as it looks for Tuan Russell. When you get Ward done, that's like a pitch out where he's got the ball. But a good tackle by Tuan Russell, Russell number 45 in open space. That is difficult. Pressured out of the pocket. He's going to run. Hit by Ray Lewis, the middle linebacker. And it's going to be two yards short of the first down at the 15. You go back to the national championship year. If that would have happened, Charlie Ward would have been in the end zone. And that's the maybe the big difference in the quarterbacks. Danny Connell. Danny Connell is an excellent thrower, but not a mobile quarterback that's going to run the ball up the field. Ray Lewis, the excellent middle linebacker with a tackle. Let's keep an eye on Messam if they don't run the football because he's 6-4 against that 5-9 corner that Miami has on that side. Throw it over the middle. Dropped by the tight end, Pearsall, and I'm not so sure that he didn't get that one tipped just before it got there by Lewis. Ray Lewis with good coverage on Melvin Pearsall. Miami, remember now, they've only had one game in the last four weeks, so they've had a lot of time to prepare for this football game. Two things could happen. One, you could come out sluggish when you haven't played many games and you've had that open date, but I think Miami has really done a nice job in scouting Florida State's film. Well, Bentley to attempt this one from the 22-yard line. His longest of the year is 28, so this one a 32-yard attempt, and by golly, he missed it. Folks, consider this. That return of a punt came back to the 22-yard line. They had a first and 10, and they come away with nothing. We'll be right back. National Championship. Ron, you, you are exactly right. If you would tell someone that Florida State was going to get the ball on what the 20, 22 yard, yard 22 line. yard line and come away empty when they were scoring 70 points a game and averaging 60 points and to come up empty, that was a big win for the Miami defense. As long as this game continues to go and we're tied, more and more confidence for that young Miami football team. Oh my goodness, hit in the backfield, and McMillan has no place to go as Wadsworth steps up and knocks him down for the loss. But the defense is saying, okay guys, we're going to help take over this contest just like we have in years past. A lot of times in the pregame warm-up, you got to watch your players when you're out as a coach. Here's Ray Lewis. I was on the field. Scott Bentley was kicking down there, and they were giving him an earful. They asked, actually asked him to leave and go down the other end because Miami did have that end of the field, but uh, may have rattled him a little bit. Second down at about 13. Play action by Clement goes on top, and he just overthrows him. He had Sae Tucker out there, and a flag is down. I think it's going to be a hold because uh, it looked like one of the uh, Miami offensive linemen is going to be caught for holding. Holding on the offense. Miami has had some open receivers. Ryan Clement just a little long in the throws. Also, where they're throwing from right now, Mike, he's got that stiff breeze behind him, so any ball that you try to put a little air under is going to wind up with too much air. And when you're, you're Larry Coker, who's the offensive coordinator for Miami, you do not want to give that ball back to them again on the 23-yard line, so you've got to try to find a way to get a first down. You cannot keep giving Florida State the ball inside the 50-yard line. They're going to eventually make you pay for it. So Florida State's going to turn this uh, holding ball down as well, and it's third down and 13. Clement, by the way, has missed his last five passes. See what they've come up with. McMillan is the deep man in the eye behind Carlo Joseph. Pressure coming. 
and he does the smart thing. You don't want to be a hero when you got Wilson hanging on you or anybody else, and he'll take the sack. That's a wide rush again. Renard Wilson, he's beating the offensive tackle. By widening that bar, you know, the offensive tackle has to get off the ball. Here's number 55, Renard Wilson. See, he just beats the tackle from the start. That's Kerlin Blaze. Kerlin Blaze has to get more depth and try to meet him a little farther back in the offensive backfield. But Clement. Well, let's see if Florida State comes after him again or if they have the return on. Not go after it again. Good snap. And he gets it away. This one trying to turn over. And interference with the receiver right here. That's going to be a penalty against Nathaniel Brooks of the Miami Hurricanes. And you see Butch, he says he got a push from behind. Don't don't penalize me because my man got pushed into it. exactly what Butch Davis was saying he got blocked into the man so we'll take a break 11 42 left in the first half we are tied when you consider Florida State getting much the better of it but they have not taken advantage they have not been able to put the points on the board against this Miami defense they're making some good moves out there they're good, doing some good uh, some good defensive calls penalties have hurt Florida State also yeah Schreiber with a snap, and they give it to Preston. Preston hit right at the line of scrimmage, and that's Nelson Smith. And again, it is a defensive lineman who stops the play, and in the early ball games for Miami, that has not been the case. Now, with this kind of play out of the defensive lineman, then the linebackers don't have to worry about trying to do too much and do something that takes them out of where they're supposed to be. They're getting good play out of the front four. Front four really is doing a good job against this veteran offensive line of Florida State. Preston out of the backfield. Holds on to the football and is going to be pushed out of bounds at the 35-yard line by Carlos Jones. Been the most successful play for Florida State. Just flare in the back. Ward Dunn or Rock Preston out of the backfield because the linebackers are really trying to work hard underneath the wide receiver, so they're getting depth. And once that ball's dropped off to Rock Preston, then they have to come up and make that open field tackle. Florida State again with the no huddle. 11 06. Left until halftime. Tied at seven, first down, seven all. Here's what I'm talking about, Danny Cannell. For 25 seconds, he's looking at the defense. He gets to see exactly what they're in and what they're going to do to it. Direct snap to Preston. Breaks it open up the middle. Cuts it back to the sideline down to the 22 yard line. 13 yards on the play. Just a direct snap to Rock Preston. Trying to control this front four a little bit because of the pass rush. Good block by Clay Shiver, the offensive center, number 53, and Rock Preston's in the secondary. Done back in the ball game. From behind, Kenny Holmes. Ball is loose, and they say incomplete pass. Kenny Holmes, the junior out of Gifford, Florida. They're playing like the Miami front four of old. Kenny Holmes, number 90, working against Jesus Hernandez, number 77. Gives him a little move, then hits Danny Cannell in the back. Stripping the football. Junior defensive end. So it's second down. it complete that's E.G. Green and let's check in again with Mike Adamley. Mike? Well Ron you guys were talking about Miami's defensive line woes. They recruited 10 defensive tackles in 91 and 92. Only three are left. Now Marvin Davis just had knee surgery. Kenny Holmes moved the defensive end. Jay Ina is now the starting right offensive tackle. Four others left the program. One never enrolled to begin with. 
Warren Sapp, of course, left early to sign with the NFL, and Patrick Riley used up his eligibility and is now playing with the Cleveland Browns. It's the kind of problems that Butch Davis is dealing with. And you can hear the poo-poo as a Pooh Bear Williams, number 22, comes into the lineup. But he's a blocker on this play. And Dunn tries to get outside in the speed of Ray Lewis. Nothing there as he'll drop him for a loss and now fourth down. That's why he is one of the best middle linebackers in the country. And his front four is playing well tonight, so he's able to scrape off and make the play against Warwick Dunn. Speed negates speed, and he has a lot of speed at the linebacker spot. So Bentley comes on. He missed the one a moment ago from 32 yards. This one will be from 34. He got this one. So Bentley from uh, the other side of the field, a better angle for a right footer, and he knocks it home, and it's a 10-7 Florida State lead. He hit that one good. Yeah, I mean, hit it, hit it well right off the bat. 10-7, Florida State goes on top. We haven't said a lot about the storm that uh, occurred earlier this week but uh, there certainly were some distractions in this area as far as the kids are concerned but you have to wonder besides the fact that Miami is playing very very well tonight if Bobby did not have the same focus with his kids that uh, that he might have had because mid part of the week everybody was on the telephone trying to call their family and loved ones and make sure that that they were doing okay and I think add to that the fact that everybody thought they were an 18 point favorite coming into this ball game sometimes you can take it you start to believe those things you start to believe that you're 18 points better and but you have to prove it on the field and Bobby Bowden tried to get his attention of his team all week he knew he was going to get the best shot of Miami it is a circle the wagon ball game for this hurricane football team. You know, E.G. Green uh, comes from uh, down at the Fort Walton Beach, which is uh, in the exact area of where the storm came through. He didn't get in touch with his parents for a long time. He was very worried. But uh, I asked him in a practice field on Thursday if he still had a home, and he said, yeah, but some folks around us were not quite as fortunate. Bentley's kick is going to come down at the 7 to Tony Gator. Well, ESPN's coverage of the Senior PGA Tour, the Transamerica, continues tomorrow, 5 o'clock, with the final round. And in the lead, Bruce Summerhays, 9 under par, tied with Trevino, Ben Smith, John Bland. What a story he is out of South Africa. And Walter Morgan at 8 under par. 5 o'clock Eastern Time, final round coverage of the Transamerica. <laughs> 152, Florida State, Miami 42. But the blocked kick has kept the Hurricanes in this football game. Ferguson will get the carry. First one in the line. Gets a lead block and then is hit by Daryl Bush, the sophomore out of Altamont Springs. Daryl Bush, uh, when I talked to Ronnie Cottrell, the linebacker coach, he said his nickname is Death Row because he takes everything so deadly serious. He's a four-point student. He's the key to this defense. He just scrapes outside, makes the tackle on Danielle Ferguson. You know, Mike, he led the team in tackles last year as a freshman. And then he had to have his knee scope just three weeks ago, so they're just getting him back. And you can tell in that replay, he's still a half step behind what he was. September 14th, he had that knee surgery, and he's back here playing tonight against Miami. Well, as you look at number 44, his counterpart there, Todd Rebold, number 48, He's just coming back from an ankle injury. Reminds the coaches of Jack Lambert, Mike Singletary, that that type of player, his eyes into the ball game. He's an emotional guy. But he is the glue that keeps this defense together. McMillan will be the tailback. Third down. Miami needs to take it to the 33 to keep this drive alive. Flag goes down, and on the running play, they are very close to the first down. As Capers comes up to make the stop, and now let's check the marker. Let's see, McMillan, nope, where they're spotting it, he will not have the first. Illegal formation on the offense.
the official coming over to uh, to talk to Butch Davis and tell him about the alignment if it was only six men on the line of scrimmage or who the movement came from. You would think that they would turn it down because according to where it was the run did not pick up the first down. Illegal procedure on the offense. Penalty declined. Fourth down. So what Butch Davis was waiting for before he sent the special teams on was to see if the play had been negated. He didn't want to have the, the kicking team out there if they were going to have to run third down again. Mike Chrissy. And he'll be kicking away to D. Feaster. Florida State coming after him. This is his best kick of the night. Feaster retreating and makes the fair catch back inside the 25. And there is a flag down at the 23 on the other end. I think it's going to be a first down for the Miami football team. Running into the kicker against the receivers. Well, that was Wadsworth. Number 85, watch him. You got a point that you're going to go to, and you ask your defensive people when they're trying to block kicks, never leave your feet, because that's exactly what's going to happen. Andre Wadsworth leaves his feet, runs into the kicker, Mike Chrissy, and keeps the drive alive for Miami. Never leave your feet, Ron. You've always got to be able to go in under control and then try to veer away from the kicker. So Chrissy says, I gave up my body for the team, and we're... <laughs> Now we have a first down. It's 10 7 if you just joined us. Florida State. 7.42 left until halftime. Nobody asked him how he was. They just said, hey, great That's job. Nice. Hey, great job, buddy. <laughs> I don't care if you're hurt. Just uh, we got a first down. Two of eight for Ryan Clements, 21 yards. We go with the draw play, and there is nothing there. Daniel Ferguson, as soon as he got the football, was covered up by Wilson, one of the first men through. I think in the last couple of series before we said Miami's defensive front was getting the best of this game. Florida State's defensive front now is really starting to rev it up, and especially Renard Wilson, number 55. Had a big sack a little while ago. Now he's hitting Danielle Ferguson in the backfield. So the front four of Florida State starting to heat it up. Well, Todd Rebol, one of the linebackers, told me yesterday as we visited that he said, you know, hey, it's our time. We've got to step up. We have not played up to our capacity on defense, and we need to pick up the slack. Ferguson breaks the tackle, goes to the 40, and will take it to the 41-yard line. I like the play call by Larry Coker because he's not trying to put the game on Ryan Clemens just yet. Good mix in the offense, not trying to get him in real long situations. Instead, giving the ball to Danielle Ferguson, number one. Sean Hamlet, the safety, who uh, came in this game a little injured tonight. Interesting that both of those safeties, Sean Hamlet and Robert Hammond, both with knee injuries. And as we mentioned, Hamlet will be scoped after this game tomorrow. They swing it out in the flat. That's Gator. Almost got the, who was the recipient of one of his defensive players' hits. He'd take it, though, because that was pretty good pursuit by his linebackers and his defensive backs to make that play. Byron Capers, number 23, eventually in on the tackle. So Chrissy again comes out to punt. The amazing stat right now, Ron, 54 yards passing by Florida State. All. Oh. Florida State with the return on and Feaster from the 19. Tried to find a lane. Got a little bit of a crack as he'll take it out to the 30. And that's a 36-yard punt. 11 on the return. Let's take a break. 6.08 left until the halftime. Seminoles by three. have three plus yards and that's it let's see what they can add to that 54 here with 608 on the clock Florida State the number one scoring team in the nation had been averaging 59 and a half points of all game and we have 608 until halftime and they have 10 right now To 
Davis pullback and just overthrows Dunn. Well, Mike, that's just that's not characteristic. It's characteristic of the way he's been playing this year. No, he's he's high on some of his throws on the outside. Nine out of 18, just 54 yards. Cannell has only hit three of his last 10 passes. Gunn bounces outside on the right, puts a head down, and he will finally be stopped by Tremaine Mack. But it's all the way out at the 44-yard line, and it's a Florida State first down. Well, Danny Cannell looks over the line of scrimmage. What he's trying to figure out is there's six people against my offensive line, and here's what he's got. One, two, three, four, five, six right here. So that becomes a running situation for him because he's got his offensive line, and he's got his fullback, Pooh Bear Williams, so he's got a good match there. And then Ward Dunn sneaking into the secondary. Williams right up the middle, has five, counted off at ten. It'll be another Seminole first down. As Clarence Pooh Bear Williams, who scored earlier tonight, has nine running touchdowns this year. Pooh Bear on a really a quick handoff. He's in the secondary, and uh, we talked about this, Mike Adamley. He eats from the four food groups. I'll let Mike Adamley tell you about that a little later. Let me tell you what Shiver said uh, yesterday, the center. He said he was weighing 296. When we called his number, he said, I can tell you right now, we hit and stayed low because 296 hurts from behind. Mike Adamley, what more do you have? Hey, Coach, it's okay. You could have done it. But basically what he was trying to say is that he was explaining his, his weight as a the reason for it, that he eats too much from the four basic food groups. Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, Burger King, and Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Oh, my. Shiver said, if you get stood up by a defensive lineman and he runs into your back, he said, you're in the training room the entire next week. Cannell on top. Oh, what a catch by Messam. Goes up over the top, and that is that athletic ability. His vertical leap got to be close to 40. Danny Cannell just puts the ball up for grabs. He knows he's got some pretty tall wide receivers. Wayne Messam, six foot four, working against Earl Little at the corner spot. Just put the ball up for grabs, and Wayne jumps up, makes the catch. Pass to the near side, and that is complete to Philip Riley. Here's the catch where he just puts the ball up the alley oop. R.C. Owens alley-oop for Wayne Messam, and he makes the catch over Earl Little. Uses that 6-4 frame. And you know, Earl is going to go back and look at that video and say, I couldn't have covered him any better if I had come back and bumped him. It would have been interference. More and more big receivers playing in college football, and you're going to have to recruit some taller defensive backs. Mike Tirico, let's check with you. I've got a tall receiver for you for Southern Cal. Keyshawn Johnson, he's been held in check by Cal in relative terms. Four catches, 52 yards. He's looking for over 100 for the 13th straight game. Right now, the Trojans lead by 12. Thanks, Michael. You know, it, well, it's a good point as far as cornerbacks. You've got to be a little taller in this day and age. Cooper in the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State. Just turn Carlos Jones around. See him finally. He'll hold on the extra point attempt by Bentley. 349 until halftime, and that'll do worlds for this uh, Florida State offense. Is that, that extra point was a little wild, but it was there, and it's 17 to 7. Well, we talked about smaller corners, and I, I wasn't kidding when I said you're gonna have to recruit a little taller corners as as the college football game's changing a little bit with these tall receivers, but this is just again. The ball's up for grabs. Andre Cooper against Carlos Jones. Andre Cooper just times it right, goes up for the football, and makes the catch against Carlos Jones. He's a basketball player recruited here at Florida State. Makes that catch. Pro football, you look at the Michael Irvins and how the Dallas Cowboys, the taller receivers, how well they're doing. 
Harper. Uh, guys with size on the outside put you in a bind when you get in those one-on-one -on -one situations. So Jones was victimized there. We mentioned that he did not start tonight, but he was victimized last week against BPI. The, the one long pass did not go for a touchdown, but it went to the one foot line. And uh, there was another one that was called back that was thrown over the top of him. So the, the coaches know that the ability is there, but you just trying to get his attention by starting Nick Ward but I think you'll see a little bit more Nick Ward here as when they get back on the field because they're going to try to get his attention once again Bentley's kick into this win this is going to be returnable by Gator runs across the field it gets tripped up at the 21 yard line and Mike Tirico what do you have this time just a reminder that coming up at halftime, as we've been talking about, upset Saturday. Nearly half the top 12 lost today. We'll show you how it happened, and we'll also relive the milestone as Eddie Robinson won game number 400 as a head coach. See you at halftime, Ron. Okay, Michael, we look forward to that. 340 left in this one until halftime, and it's now a 10-point Florida State lead. Coming over the middle and knocked away, and now here comes two flags. That's going to be pass interference called against Florida State. As Troy Saunders, I believe, was holding on to him or put the left hand in his back. Yeah, it looked like contact all the way on the receiver by Saunders. You see number four, pass Saunders, but he's making yeah, a collision right there with Yateel Green. Just wrapped him up with that uh, left hand around his waist. That changes your strategy a little bit too if you're Butch Davis because now with you had 10 yards onto that now that's you got field position that you might want to get down there even though you've got a young quarterback it's time now to cut him loose. And you talk about the weapons that Florida State has on offense number seven there Jamie German and you teal green 87 are two big league receivers. As we mentioned back in the first quarter. Mentioned in the first quarter, uh, four two or just under is what the German was timed at at a camp coming out of high school. So you get a bump and run with him, you better be able to bump big and run fast. Pass in the flat, it is hit, it. intercepted and dropped. They're going to say incomplete. But Robert Hammond had just given up his body. That's the only problem with trying to cut it loose with 330 because an interception, another score, you get started in a track meet. But Ryan Clement knows he was eyeing up the receiver too long. Robert Hammond broke on the ball, and he's he's open there for the interception. And for, for those who wonder how Chris C. Jones wound up on the ground, he lost his footing. He was not pushed. McMillan is the lone setback. Clement zings it, has it complete. That's Daphnis right over the middle. And his tight end will take it to the... Where are they going to mark him here? Just across the 40-yard line. As Robert Hammond came up to make the play on him. And let's see, it's going to be third down. And to move the chains, they have to go to the 47-yard line. 3.06, 3.05 and counting until the halftime. Mike Tirico will be coming up at halftime with a report on what really has been upset Saturday. Some huge surprises around the country in college football. Hit, hit again, and he'll be sacked. That's twice that they've gotten to him, and this one is way back at the 31-yard line. And Shevin Smith is the man who wraps him up, but Boulware is the guy who pressured him out of the pocket. Yeah, Peter Boulware may be the best defensive lineman that's of the pass rush. You see a real wide rush here also again, and the tackle has to get off the line of scrimmage to be able to get to him. Look at here, he never moves. Something happened on the count. Either it was a silent count, something, the tackle never moved on that play. Never got touched, you're right. Chrissy's kick. Wobbly spiral, but it's a good one. Way back to the 20 yard line as Feaster is backpedaling. And that's a kick of 48 yards. Well, the. You can hear the thumps right now. The round ball is moving. 
Well, with the average time that Florida State has been taking to score, this is plenty of time for them as Dunn gets the handoff. Little ad living comes to the outside as you see a flag come down, and he will take it to the 32-yard line. Nick Ward finally wrapped him up. I think you're going to get a holding call on Andre Cooper as a wide receiver. Now, he made some real good blocks early, but it looks like he was holding out here on the outside. We'll see. Either that or they're going to call it against the Miami guy for a face mask. Well, Roy Dunn can make some moves, stop on a dime, and change direction. Personal foul, face mask on the defense. I think it was on Andre Cooper because he was out here fighting. Ward Dunn, here's the handoff. Nothing up inside. Now I think I'll go outside. You're going to pick up Andre Cooper, number one, on the outside here. And I think that's the call. Let's see. Yep, right to the face mask by Nick Ward, number 27. He's belting him around there. More punches there and some heavyweight fights. <laughs> and a lot less expensive. So the penalty takes it out to the 47-yard line. First down, Seminoles, 146 until halftime, and it'll go to the draw play. Done again inside the 45, and he's down to the 42 as Kenny Holmes will wrap him up, and we got another flag deep downfield. Same two guys again, Ron. Andre Cooper against Nick Ward. Let's Looking down to the field as uh, Florida State gets to start it off here. They won the opening toss and deferred to the second hand. We were tied at seven at the end of the first quarter, but then in the second quarter, 17 unanswered points by the Seminole. Rock Preston, back deep. Good will kick it off also. D. Feaster is back with Preston. He's going to let this one go. It uh, will go out of bounds. By the way, at the end of the first half, you saw the crowded mess right in front of Florida State's uh, sideline to answer was there a penalty? Yes, there were offsetting penalties for shoving uh, and, and pushing, but also a uh, talk going back between the two teams. So it was offsetting, and uh, that's the reason we're starting with in this third quarter. Well, Danny Cannell got red hot there with uh, six minutes to go. He had 54 yards passing. Now he has 147, so they found a little bit of a mix in their game. The draw play to Warwick Dunn has opened up the passing game. And really good the balance also with 155 yards rushing and 147 passing. Blocking on Earl Little. You're going to see him just turn Earl Little to the outside. There's the block by 89. That opened it up wide for Ward Dunn. Straight ahead, breaks tackle after tackle, and he would have it all the way to the 11. Mike, the other thing, it looked as old as, well, go ahead with the run shot. Well, I think the most, the successful thing for them, for Florida State's been the draw play inside until that last play where Ward Dunn was able to get outside. It also looked as though that corner had come up the bump, and when you start doing that, you turn your back on the play, which allowed Dunn to get a head of steam down the field. The track meets about ready to begin here. If they don't stop him, they'll get the ball turned over here. Clarence Pubel Williams takes it into left tackle for no game. Mike Adamley, let's check back with you. You know, everybody knows that Warwick Dunn is fast speed, not a problem for him. The thing that really makes him tough is the fact that he's only 5'9", and he runs low to the ground. Mike, it kind of reminds me of those old Kansas City Chief days that Hank Stram had with Mike Garrett and Warren McVay. He's obscured by their offensive linemen. By the time the defense sees him, he's gone. He doesn't seem like he's running, but he's making a lot of yards. Changes to get away from the linebacker or Little. The corner comes over to make the tackle on him. And it's eight tackles we have unofficially for Little. One of the interesting things about Warwick Dunn, he's a quarterback out of high school, and he was one of the four fastest time track athletes that Florida State was recruiting. But if Florida State recruited him, they really recruited him to play cornerback because they thought he was such had such great speed as you see him outside here. But when he got here, he went to Bobby Bowden and he said, listen, I want to be a running back. Of course, Bobby Bowden has never regretted that decision. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear the crowd reacting. 
Lightning looking for Kubar Williams. He's already scored one today. He's given nine on the year. But instead, he goes with the small back, and Lewis will make the tackle. They well, don't get it into the end zone, but it's only about a half yard away, if that much. You know, you've got a good football team, and Kubar Williams can come in in short yardage and, and usually carry the ball into the touchdowns. And Warwick Dunn does not mind that because he just wants to win. So it doesn't matter who scores the touchdown, but everybody in the stand is yelling Pooh Bear here tonight, so you probably figure it's going to be him. They'll probably give it to Warwick. It's, it's done. Touchdown. Put the route on, Ron. Trying to make it a 31 to 7 ball game. Miami needs something in a hurry here. And the track meets we got more right gun getting into the end zone. By the block by Cooper Williams. Well, he scores the touchdown, and he also has put himself in the record books tonight with five consecutive 100 yard games. That sets a new Florida State record. You're looking at the offensive line, and they look like a sweat. Well, one of the things also that Shiver talked about yesterday, Clay Shiver, the offensive center who is so highly touted uh, by the pro scouts, he talked in terms of the depth. And he said, you know, our number two is the guys that play behind us. The coaches have the utmost confidence in putting them in the ball. Now. He said, which helps us because we stay fresher longer. Because this team's been scoring so many points, number twos have played a lot. Well, they do. They play a lot. They get a lot of experience. And Bobby Bob's one of the coaches who started playing his second team guys early in the ball game to give them more depth as the season rolls on. Well, Bobby... You don't see the same wrinkles in his face that you saw in that first quarter, do you? No, he's loosened up a little bit. <laughs> Tightness is gone. After that blocked kick and Miami tied it at seven apiece, Bobby was working on that gum and pacing pretty hard. <laughs> Big kickoff return over turn those wrinkles off. <laughs> That's Gator standing. Uh, and he's capable. Yeah, he is. Well, he got under this one. Got to be short. And they come down to Trent Jones at the 14. This one here is also capable as he'll take it to the 33. Next Saturday, ESPN2 gives you a complete day of college football coverage. At 1, Alex Smith and Indiana clash with Iowa. At 5, catch all the plays on Sports Night, the college football edition. Found a lot of good backs in the Big Ten, but I'll tell you the best one may be that kid from Minnesota, Chris Darkins. Saw him on TV a couple weeks ago against Syracuse. Is he good? And he's one that, like, you know, he's not getting a lot of attention either. He is in that part of the world, but not as far as the entire country. Ferguson going to take it up around the 40 yard line. Sean Hamlet in that safety spot will tackle him, but it's a gain of six. Daniel Ferguson is so deep in the back that he might be nine yards deep. His heels at nine yards. When they get the ball back to him, he has to run a long way to get to the line of scrimmage. But they like him deep to get the ball deep to him so he can cut back and see the holes as he gets the football. Ferguson again. You can see it doesn't take very much. Let's check in with Mike Tirico. Mike? saying let's, let's wake up here it's not time to take that hiatus yet our situation is they are stretching the chains down on the sideline and it is just short so it'll be third down Mercier right there we talk about him in the first half Mike we're talking about good running backs in the Big Ten Mercier went to a prep school after he graduated from high school in Montreal. And the school that he went to is the one that 
produced Bianca Batuba. He went there. Also, you remember, Hyshan El Mastid, who played guard for Arizona and is playing in the Oilers right now. Same school, so that place has been a pipeline for good players. It's easy for you to say. But there's a lot of good players come out of Canada into the, into the college ranks. College coaches always will go up there and find some good players. And when I was in Arizona, we found a kid named Chris Schultz who played in the Canadian League for a long time. See those linebackers creeping up in the third and short. It's darkness in motion. And more and more this is happening uh, as Miami's getting a little frustrated with, uh, with what's happening. Dead ball foul. Ball start on the offense. As I mentioned back at the first half, also, uh, Mercier, really interesting in the fact that at his size, at 6'4", 274, he's a trick skier. He was one of the best young skiers in all of Canada. Speaks French, but, uh, French, besides speaking English, but he said he does miss the skiing. He likes the warm weather of mine. So he's going to have to do some good blocking right here as Tony Gator comes in, an own setback, but it is with a five-yard penalty, third down and six for the Kings. Gator in the draw play. Tries to get it outside, and he's going to have the first down, I believe. Yeah. At the 44-yard line, Todd Rebol finally Gator locked him up. Good block by Jamie German, the wide receiver for Miami. And Bobby Bob, when he talks about this football team, knows he's going to have to get better effort out of his defense than he has early in the season to be a national contender to win it all. Here, Gator, number 22, follows the block of German for the first down. Close to the first down. Andrews defensive coordinator is looking for something to rally his defense around. This kind of performance tonight could be that, where they grow in confidence. I asked him on, on Thursday at the practice field, so Mickey, you're kind of pulling your hair out, aren't you? He said, I didn't have much left to pull out, but yeah. It's, uh, it's been one of those things where, as we mentioned, they thought they were going to have seven back, and then two went into the pros. Uh, as you look at the number of the ranking of the Florida State defense. Yeah, 76th in the country in rushing defense. That's not typical of Florida State's defensive teams, but uh, I think they're getting a lot of good play out of the front four tonight, and they'll gain confidence in this game. Pass caught. He kept the foot in bounds. That's the best throw tonight that Ryan Clement has made. He threw it on time to Jermaine Chambers, who got a pretty good cushion on the outside for the completion. So uh, a nice throw by Ryan Clement. So they spotted at the 42-yard line, and I think you could detect in our interview with Butch Davis that Mike Adamley did with him, and he was really kind of upset with and frustrated himself with the offense. Well, he talked the about the conservative play calling, but I think that's what they had to do in this ball game. They were playing it close until that mark there late in the second quarter. They just kind of just kind of got away from it. McMillan takes it to the 38. Well, you can hear the wind in our microphones up here as it seems to be picking up a little bit. It's like the southwest that it's blowing out of. Ferguson comes back into the backfield, replacing the middle of the tailback. Conachre hit in the backfield, and Howard is there. Wilson in the vicinity, and a slow developing play goes either side of the football is sometimes hard to work against this kind of well technique. against the, you're right against the speed defense and especially with Renard Wilson getting up field so far the outside defensive ends again let's just watch him here come from the outside again they stop the counter because they're able to get up the field you see Wilson take on the block of the guard now force it outside to court number 56 that's exactly so it's third down and they need the 32 yard line Almost think two downs here, Ryan, because you're going to run out of here if you don't get points this time. Three-step drop, going to go up on top. And incomplete. Chambers caught it out of bounds, or couldn't hold on to it out of bounds. I think he goes for it here on fourth down. you got to get something happen here. 
Defense positive for you. That was the same type of play there that is, is a two deep coverage is that Andre Cooper scored on. Good coverage right here. Byron Capers, number 23. And for those of you who said, well, he was face masking, you actually can do that in college. You just can't bump him until the ball gets you. Fourth down, proud East Standing. Got it, complete, your teal green at the 21-yard line. Got to get those chains moving. They were 0 for 8 and third downs in that first half. And they've got to have something positive happening. Ryan Clement with a very good throw here to Yatiel Green. And Butch Davis just challenging his football team. He knows he's still got a long season to go here. And the Big East is winnable yet. If they can get back in that race. So he needs good things to happen for his quarterback and his football team tonight to build on. They go back to the two-back set there, Harris the fullback, McMillan in a tailback. And Max will take it into the boundary. And he gets tagged and tagged again. Hamlet, the first man there to get to him, and they're going to give him progress to the 19. Got a good block from Derek Harris, the fullback, who hardly ever carries the ball from Miami. Coming into the night, he hadn't had a carry as the starting fullback, but he's a former linebacker, former tight end. And he's there for one purpose, to block for that tailback. This is Daphnis, the tight end, who is injured on the play. He's up, hobbles off the field. Nine oh four to play, third quarter. Florida State, 31, Miami, 7. Mike Clement's grandmother said she wasn't going to watch the ball game tonight. I think she's kind of probably sneaking in watching this tonight, don't you think? <laughs> I hope she is. Real proud of Ryan Clement, but she said since the start, he's going to start against Florida State. I'm not going to watch the game. A little nervous. Sean Hamlet also was injured on the play for Florida State, and he had to come off on the near side. Second down, King. The ball comes loose. Robert Hannon put the wood on Chris C. Jones, and that's checked with Mike Tirico in the baseball playoff. Mike? Okay, Michael, Ron Franklin, along with Mike Gottfried and Mike Adamley from Tallahassee, Bill Campbell Stadium, 31-7 with 8.46 left to play third quarter. Rich Davis with his first trip in here as head coach against Florida State. Of course, he came up here when he was on the staff of Jimmy Johnson. Incomplete. Now, here's a flag late, but not down in the second bay. It is behind the quarterback. The referee threw this one. Might get James Cozy for hitting the quarterback a little bit late. Personal foul, roughing the passer on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Florida State came with a blitz on the outside, brought both outside corners. Cozy number 20, there's the late hit on Ryan Clement. The officials are going to keep a real close eye on this one. They can't let it get out of hand. And that's the reason that the Terry Monk threw that flag just now. Because right at the end of the first half, it got real volatile. And now the timeout has been called. And Florida State calls it. We'll take the break. We'll be right back. This is a... Uh, been watching this game off and on at least tonight to see how his uh, former protege is, is getting along here at uh, Tallahassee. Right now it's 31-7 Florida State. But the Hurricanes are driving. McMillan running back into the boundary gets by the first tackler but will not get by Robert Hammond. Florida 
State jumped into a 5-3 defense, an eight-man front trying to stop McMillan on the run. But good, very good pursuit out of the secondary, and that Robert Hammond, number six, for the tackle. You can see Canal Spain coming in and bumping into uh, the Hammond. He was there to help him. Patterson back in the ball game at tailback. Off. Yeah, just another of many hits both sides of the football tonight Julian Pittman number 95 he's out of Niceville he was another of the youngsters that was very concerned about his family that's down in the area where the storm came through and Florida State has a player shaken up Thirty-one to seven, Florida State at the eight nineteen mark of the third quarter. Situation: third down for the Hurricanes, and the ball resting just outside the eight. Got it right up in the middle, Jamie German, and he's going to be stopped. Inside the four. New touchdowns here, Ryan. Keep up with this offense. So it's a fourth down and goal, and it looks as though the field goal unit is coming on. 21 Dane for it. going to be put down at the 10 yard line and Butch Davis will go for the field goal with a fourth down and goal from the three. And he gets a good one. So we'll hold it right here with 7-12 to play in the third quarter and it's now Florida State 31 to 10. That's a good drive by Miami and especially for Ryan Clement the quarterback to get a little confidence but you really have to get sevens against Florida State. You can't afford to get threes. That was a confidence builder for that young man. Well, ESPN's coverage of the senior PGA Tour the Transamerica continues tomorrow at 5 o'clock with the final round. And in the lead, look at this time. Summer Hayes, Trevino, Smith, and Land at nine under. Walter Morgan at eight under par. So look for Jim Kelly and company tomorrow. Final round coverage. Five o'clock Eastern time, the Transamerica. <laughs> Preston and D. Feaster deploying. But they are not all the way back to the goal line. So Florida State puts the good hands group up just across the 50 yard line and they are anticipating that Miami might try an onside kick here. And he kicks it away. And because of the wind, Preston able to nestle under this one at the three. Let's check back with you. Well, there he is, Florida State's little big man, Warwick Dunn. He sets a school record tonight with his fifth straight 100-yard rushing game. He came in tied with Sammy Smith. This is how he did it. He bounces outside and then turns on the Jets. But that's only one of the things that makes him a very special running back. He's also tough, too. Bobby Bowden probably doesn't like them to see this, but when it calls for it, the situation, he can bang it in as well. Warwick Dunn, I love this guy, 5'9", 178. Bobby doesn't want him to touch the ball any more than about 25 times. They're worried about him getting hurt, but he wants to. He loves it. You said, how many, I know you love him as a football player, but how tall are you, Mike, when you play? 5'9", 197. Uh, there it is. Uh, <laughs> right, you got it. Yeah, yeah that's why I, I, lo I love Rock Preston. of course, an excellent running back, Northwestern. Yeah, I started to say, that's... Uh, for all the folks who went to Northwestern and Mike Adamley 
My phone rang just as that uh, ball game was official, and I picked it up and said, "Hi, Mike. How are you?" Either him or Adrian Carson, <laughs> I right? Did, yeah, I do. That Adrian was there doing the game, so he wasn't calling yet. <laughs> Too bad Williams with the carry, and then he forked me. Comes up to make the stop. Let's go back to uh, to Warwick and talking to him on the practice field the other day. This young man. The really important thing to him, he, he obviously wants to be a good football player, and he is that. But his books are really important to him as well, and he's gone to summer school every year so that he can stay ahead. And he told me he's taking 17 hours this semester. Computer science major. 5, 10, 15, 20, off to the races again. And finally pushed out of bounds down here at the 36-yard line. Tremaine Mack, the first man to get to him, he had a 43 a minute ago. Now he rattles off a 37. Well, Mike Adamley's favorite running back here, Warwick Dunn, going to pop again. It's a good block from Aaron Deli, number seven, the wide receiver, and into the secondary again. Now Rock Preston gives him a breather, but they go with Williams, and he takes it straight ahead for three, maybe four. Lang there to wrap him up. Ron, Florida State said uh, I had a special meeting after two days this year, and their offense said we want to break all the offensive records of the 1993 national champs. They want to average 46 points a game and 550 yards of offense. And there's the comparison, and they're on track tonight. And Mike Tirico, let's check back with you. Okay, Mike, thank you. That's the young man that uh, Coach Gottlieb was talking about. As Kubert takes it off the left side this time, and gets down to the 19-yard line. Lewis was the man at the bottom of the stack, and, and when Williams at 280-plus carried the ball, it's not always the best place to be at the bottom of the pile when you stop him. It's a nice job by Courtney, number 99. That's what I was talking about a, a little while ago when you we were talking about going for three or seven because this team's so explosive on offense that they're right back knocking on the door again for seven, or they can negate your three real quick if they make the field goal. So tough to settle for field goals against this team. Knocked down by Kenny Holmes at the line of scrimmage. Kenny Holmes has really had a good evening tonight for Miami's defense. Really set himself up to help this defense with some good plays, good pass rush, and hands up right here deflecting the Danny Cannell pass. So that means Bentley will come on to attempt. Let's see, Cannell is going to put it down at the just short of the 30-yard line, so let's call it a 40-yard attempt. Miami needs a block here big time. And Miami has called a timeout, so we'll take it with it. 4.09 left to play, third quarter. Ray Lewis in the middle. Nick is on its way, plenty of distance, and he is wide right. No good. It's not a part of the game that's going to satisfy Bobby Bowden tonight. Two missed field goals. From one big rivalry to another, next week will be in Birmingham as Peyton Manning leads Tennessee up against the Crimson Tide. The Volunteers are number 10. Alabama is number 16. The battle starts at 7.30 next Saturday night. As, as good as his ball clubs have been, what is it about field goal kicking here at Florida State? It has it been, it's really been erratic time to time. And they were able to go out and recruit the best kicker, supposedly, coming out of high school football that year in Bentley. Just hasn't been consistent. Back is in motion. Pass in 
runs complete. That's German. Jamie German, and he'll have the first down out of the 37. Jamie German. Stop is made by number 26, Errol Bell. 34 yards. It's encouraging second half for Butch Davis for Ryan Clement because he's looked like an entirely different quarterback here in the second half. Much more confidence in what he's doing. Middle has seen a lot of action tonight. He's back in the ball game now. Gets the handoff and uh, takes it straight ahead. His bodies still come crashing in. And let's check back with Mike Tirico. Mike. best young quarterback of dissecting defenses. I mean, he really is, is smart and he works hard at it. He understands game tapes and everything. He is knowledgeable when he goes down the scrimmage. Quick study. That's it as the ball has gotten away, but uh, nobody's close. And the reason is because Capers was just tackling the teal green. Wadsworth is the man who was coming after Clement and put him to the ground just as he threw it. See the pressure from the left side on Ryan Clement. Stands right in there. Andre Wadsworth in a pressure. Here's the teal green number 87 working against Capers. A lot of contact both ways there, Ron, but of course it's going to go against Florida State. So the penalty puts it at the 43-yard line, the 43 of Florida State. Very hard, and all of a sudden, it's going the other direction. Just not any movement in the offensive line on the Miami defense. You see McMillan get the handoff, but there's no place to run. He just runs into the pow of his offensive lineman, Curlin Blaze, number 79, who gets stood up by Arpheus Roy. About to go into two minutes in our third quarter. See that 25 second clock going down. And from the pattern that was run, Chambers was going to go on a post. Dead ball foul, delay of game on the offense, remain second down. We're seeing a different quarterback in this second half. Here's your quarterback for the future of Miami right now. We'll maybe, maybe get a look at Scott Covington maybe in the fourth quarter, but Ryan Clement is going to take him to that Big East schedule. German gets by one tackler, and he'll take it within two yards of the first down at the 35 as Shevin Smith. Is there to put the stop on him. We were talking with Chuck, one of the defensive coaches here at Florida State, is Jamie German's coming across the middle, makes the catch, and then runs close to the first down. But he was talking about a gathering that they had down at West Palm Beach, Florida. They had coaches talk, three coaches talk, and all of a sudden, Miami, Ryan Clement stood up, 19 year old, and said he gave a real good speech for 15 minutes. And he, he knew then with that confidence that he was going to be a pretty good quarterback for Miami. Third down and two. Ball is fumbled. Florida State has fallen on the football. Is it a no play or not? Howard is on the ball. Dead ball foul against the offense. Ball snap. It'll remain third down. 
had some movement in Florida State's defensive line to try to snap the ball. And they're moving. So clock runs. We are under one minute to play third quarter. Florida State came out and uh, got quick, quick points in the third quarter. Now Miami trying to answer again after kicking the field goal. And it, near side, intercepted, but it's out of bounds. Samari Roll came down with it, but he was well beyond the side boundary. Good coverage. Now Samari Roll was in great shape there against Omar Roll, number nine. So. Roll going against roll. It's uh, but they're they're not related. See if, if, uh, if one of these clubs had uh, had, re had recruited a guy named Tide, then you'd have roll tied roll. <laughs> Trying to get in that promotion in the game next week. That's huh? exactly right. That's who you'll see next week. Florida State sneaking up in the blitz. Clemens got to be hit, and he is sacked back at the 48-yard line. Wilson. Cabell <laughs> Spain was so excited that he threw his own teammates down. <laughs> and there's Mickey right in the middle of it. Mickey out there is the defensive coordinator. Bernard Wilson again getting a good start. Goes inside to get a good little movement, little stun on there with Corn Cano Spain, and he came outside. Renard Wilson went inside, was not blocked, got right to Ryan Clement. You also could see that actually quarterback kind of ran into the defender as Mercier appeared to have a little bit of a lock on it. Couldn't do it though. Good Florida State, great field position. Preston cuts it back inside. We got a whistle to stop it. That's going to be the last play of the third quarter. State leading by 21 as we uh, go into this fourth quarter and a couple of numbers through the first 45 minutes of play Miami as far as rushing 27 attempts 54 yards for a two even per carry average Florida State 38 carries 273 yards they're averaging 7.2 every time they run the football and here's the man who has done the biggest amount of damage and done I believe tripped over his own offensive lineman until that carry, Warwick had 18 uh, attempts, 186 for an average of 10.3. They come out of the uh, the shotgun. Jesus Hernandez didn't knock it away. That might have been picked off by Miami. Jesus Hernandez looked like was the intended receiver on this play. It just slipped out of Warwick Dunn's hands. Well, you can't use Rossin anymore. He doesn't have gloves on, does he? Or Here's the pitch, and Warwick Dunn did a nice job. He didn't show it. Looked like run all the way, and then all of a sudden he raises up the throw. And the ball just slips right out of his hand like a shot put. Oh my. Well, he doesn't want to see his teammates in team meeting next year. Let's just blast this one all the way to the end zone line for a touchback that is a 49 yard punt. Mike Adamley, let's check in with you. You know, Ron and Mike, possible sanctions by the NCAA still hang over the Miami and Florida State football programs. Both still schools are unsure as to when they'll go before the NCAA's. Committee on Infractions, I talked to uh, Florida State Athletic Director Dave Hart tonight about it. You know, it's left both coaches in limbo. Bobby Bowden and Butch Davis are ready to accept 
whatever the NCAA deals out, but they'd like to make them, I'd like the NCAA have them make a decision soon because the biggest problem they're facing right now is recruiting. They might get back to 200 recruits here tonight. The most Florida State's ever had in a ball game. the left side and he'll take it all the way to the 30 yard line. Daniel We've talked about the problems with the NCAA. They just take too long. One organization that they ought to have different locations and let people make decisions on these things a little bit quicker because it does affect recruiting. It does uh, people use it against you. Just a wind coming through. Uh, up here as it continues to pick up. And now a timeout is going to be called and taken by Miami, so we'll take it with it. Summer, he said, look out for that running back. 
Well, Covington has come in at quarterback. And uh, right off the bat, we got a dead ball foul. False start. On the offense. So we're dealing Five with yard the penalty. The first down. New quarterback, and uh, he's greeted with a five yarder right off the bat. Now, I like Scott Covington. What, what I watched to him in practice at Miami before the season started. Now, he missed all spring practice with surgery. Larry Coker, the quarterback coach, said. Had he gotten the opportunity to Ryan Clement, that he would have done the same good job of using the tech. Well, this one to the left side. Oh, pretty good collision there. You could hear the pop. Vernon Crawford, 47, comes up to uh, fill the hole. Scott Covington has a strong arm. Very highly recruited player out of Laguna, California. Gets his chance with 12 minutes on the clock. He's even a little bit taller than uh, Ryan Cook. Ryan is 6'2", and Scott is listed as uh, 6'3". Both with good size, around 200 pounds. See his first pass. Lobs it out there just beyond the outstretched hands of Yatiel Green. We talked about running backs a little bit ago. Troy Davis, Iowa State, uh, had that good ball game again where he went over 1,000 yards. He's from Miami, Southridge High School. He's lost so many players in the state of Florida. But his brother was on a pace to break his records in high school and broke his leg down there. So there's a lot of good running backs coming out of that Miami area also. This state has really produced just tons and tons of great football players. In the, the biggest percentage of three really good football teams. Uh, another 150 go out to other schools. Scholarship. Well played with Ferguson. Leaves his way. Finally caught from behind by Wadsworth. Andre plays behind Canel Spain. And uh, we've called his number several times since he's come in. He's only a sophomore. And I don't think that we're going to see Thad Busby now. And then you're going to see another impressive quarterback come off that bench for Florida State. Look, this guy really, Thad Busby, has a great career. Not only here ahead, but he's going to be uh, playing in the NFL someday. Chrissy's kick. Bearcats is called for and is made at the board. Well, the college basketball season tips off next Saturday with Midnight Men. CSPN comes to you live from Maryland, Virginia, and Michigan. What about ESPN2? Well, the deuce will be in Kansas, Minnesota, and Mississippi State. One week from tonight, Midnight Madness. Thad Busby comes in at quarterback. He is out of pace for it. Which also is right down in the area where the storm came through earlier this week. You see his number. player out of Pennsylvania. Everybody thought he was going to go to Penn State. And then here you talk about Dan Kendra, the freshman. He's going to redshirt. They say he could be a linebacker. And then Randy Moss, who was signed in Notre Dame and then uh, ran into a problem. Lou Holtz called Bobby Bowden, told him he thought he should take him, and they're going to bring him in here. He's in here in school right now. Going will be a great wide receiver for Florida State. Not going to play this year. Mike, the coaches say they are redshirting three wide receivers that are as good as they have ever had here. So, Looks like the production line continues. Busby cut from behind. It's Kenny Holmes. He will sack him back at the 21 yard line. That's the front uh, play that you'd expect out of Miami. 
Kenny Holmes making the sack on Dad Busby. He really didn't buy the fake at all. Stayed right with the quarterback, the sacking. Kamari Charlton coming out of the lineup. Loss of six on the play. Clock running, we're now under 10, left of the ball game. Florida State, 38 to 10. And you can see Kevin Long, 51, sophomore out of Somerville, South Carolina. has come in replacing Shiver at center. Burgess will trip him up. And it's going to be fourth down. Bentley will come on, and uh, the crowd doesn't agree. They want to, they want to score as many as they can on Miami. Well, there's not a lot of love lost. Either way, Miami and Florida State and Florida you State. You the same reaction when you the Orange Bowl. Exactly. And if she was on the other foot. And that other school in the middle down there, they have the same reaction. They didn't like to <laughs> let them have it. Let's see if Bentley can uh, go to two or four, and he does. Pensacola Avenue on that one. Let's take a break. 38 10. Seminaries on top. So I think that's the thing Butch Davis will want to come out of this game, find out the recipe that he needs to take into the Big East the rest of the way to try to win that lead again. Jones hit it right in the side, and he just dropped it. <laughs> On the remaining schedule, Mike. Yeah, they, they've got a schedule that they can win some ball games there. There's no dominating football team on the remaining schedule. So they still have a chance, even though they've got a loss in the league at Virginia Tech. It's a league that's wide open. A lot of competitive teams in the East. Big East. <laughs> Of in motion. Gets by the first pressure, will not get by a bull roll. Four sacks by Florida State tonight. Bowler is really impressive because he's a very good pass rusher. They like him in in pass situations because he really has a quick start out of his stance. He really moves number 58. Being blocked here. By Jay Johnson, number 74, just gets by him and then takes Scott Covington to the ground. Third down. Line to make is the 35 yard line. Jones gets this one, and then he's going to be tackled by Sam Powell. Sam leads the team in tackles, and you can see his agility. The quickest of the linebackers, and he's there to snuff out that swing pass. Well, coming up, the residents in uh, Schroeder, the Colorado upset, Northwestern wins, and Eddie gets number 400. That and more. This is Pruitt coming this time instead of Chrissy, and, well, this is not very pretty, but... 41. Easter is tackled immediately, and let's check in with Mike Adamay. Mike? Well, Ron and Mike, all night long we have talked about the great, great athletic talent on the field tonight, but how about the unsung heroes, our centers of attention, like Casey Jones and Clay Shiver of Florida State. Clay is so smart, he makes all the line calls. A great blocker, Danny Cannell, even lets him watch films with him. And Casey Jones, he'll play on Sunday afternoons, likens himself to Mark Stepnowski, and he pass blocks like a maniac. But Clay Shiver, this guy is a quarterback trapped in the center's body. It's something he wanted to do all of his life, but hasn't had a chance. Maybe the way the game's going, Bobby Bottom has put him behind another center. yesterday the same thing and I think it's probably because Stepanski is a little bit undersized compared to, to some of the centers in the league and both of these guys are comparable in size. Shiver's about 62-270. KC is a 62-257. But they are both very, very good young prospects for the young crowd. 
draw play. And that's going to be Feaster. Feaster was a freshman at a rock pool, South Carolina. Now he was the player of the year in South Carolina, and a big recruiting battle in Florida State ended up with him. And uh, the coaches are real impressed with his quickness. They say just like work done. So they really don't lose anything when Warwick Dunn's out of there. Rock Preston's in there, and then you get Feaster on the field. So they've got the same kind of bats. Can't be a, a tailback here, Mike, and be over five now. That's, that's what it looks like because both Warwick, Rock, and D are all that side. Cookie cutter. <laughs> is down at the bottom of the pile. When you talk about the running back situation, uh, Chuck Amato was telling us a story uh, the other day about uh, Bobby Bowden and Danielle Ferguson's home and uh, recruiting him. And he said, you know, he, all of a sudden, Chuck Mouse said, almost fell off the couch. He said, son, you know, we got a lot of good running backs. So why are you going to come there? And Chuck Mouse said, why did you say that after? He said, I want to be honest with you. He said, we have some good running backs here. Uh, so, Danielle opted to go to his first ball committed to Notre Dame and then decided on Miami. Well, Chuck said he walked out and got in the car and he said, Coach, why did you say that? <laughs> Dead ball foul. False start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains second down. And now too, Florida State would talk about the running backs, but they got a lot of great receivers on this field too. Start with number one, Andre Cooper. Big play offense, big play uh, going up to the football, the, the passes that they can jump for. Here's Philip Riley making the catch. Abdullah, the freshman out of Davie, Florida, carries on that play, and it's Vinnie uh, Portman. We, we look at those throws, man, and we talked about R.C. Owens and that one as a kid. They used to talk about the alley oop pass, and R.C. Owens probably watching, maybe watching this game tonight. He didn't mind these guys because the ball really is put up for grabs, and, and when you throw it up, and uh, Andre Cooper in that 6-2 frame, and uh, Wayne Messam made a catch tonight, that 6-4 frame, they are able to make the quarterback look pretty good. Terry Monk, the referee, with a smile on his face, and he hops right back up, but he got proud of the media. Well, Terry, uh, he flies out of Mobile because he's over in Mississippi. Uh, he really is a good official and a real likable guy, but uh, I don't think they're going to give Kenny Holmes any more than one sack there for taking Terry Monk down, too. <laughs> probably officially should say at least one and a half. Terry's probably saying, you know, it's been a long night. I should have been out of the way here, but I kind of fell asleep. I was counting my money here a little bit. Well, the young got hit early. He got rolled up. He's okay. This is Benton on the return. ESPN is your home for college football again next Saturday. At 11.30, it starts with college game day. 12.30, Penn State takes on Purdue. 3.30 and 7, it scores and highlights. At 7.30, Tennessee marches into Alabama. And at 10.30, we put a period on the day. Next Saturday, of course, Tennessee's had problems with Alabama. That's been one of those kind of games they haven't been able to go to hunt. I thought that was a big win for the balls today because also Arkansas has been a nemesis for them in recent years. German, and he stopped at the 27. Uh, Ron, we, we talked earlier tonight, Deion Sanders, of course, and I thought it was a really great gesture with the equipment manager, what he did. Uh, showed me a little class in Deion Sanders tonight, and 
but I'm a little disappointed. I thought maybe Lee Corso Jersey would have been retired here. You know, that little, that little quarterback, uh, highly recruited. And there he is, interception leaders. He's tied with that. The only thing, he might be tied with interceptions, but not money. Because Dion got a lot more money than Lee Corso. <laughs> Ball is incomplete as it hits right in the hands of Chris C. Jones and popped out and in the collision game. You, did, you didn't, uh, you, know, you agree as you see Lee there. Uh, he may have as much money as uh, Dion. What do you think? Dressing like he's got a lot of money. He may have more. And he's keeping it too. No, he doesn't know enough Jones left right now. Dion does. Or the right Jones anyway. 257 left in our ball game, 41 to 10. Going to state. Covington continues to go quarterback. Brings it out to McMillan. Gets by one tackle and then we'll go out of bounds. And Mike Tirico, let's check back with you. of 25. The offense needed that at Alabama because last week in the big outburst in the 31 points, still it was the defensive special team. Yeah, but good. you like that, though. If your defense <laughs> is going to give you those points, uh, Stallings where he said, hey, our defense was playing so well, there was no sense in really opening it up. Had to take the defense off the field to keep them running it up. They always play great defense at Alabama. Yep, they do. Covington with his pass. Has it complete at the 48. Mike, I see what you mean. This youngster really has a nice motion. He I'm really in, throws well. I'm telling you, I'm impressed with uh, Scott Covington because uh, he's got a good uh, eyes. He's got good vision. He's got a good release. He's a strong arm. At 6'3 frame. Uh, you don't hear a lot about him down in Miami. Coming up next, residents in college football scoreboard. An Alabama defense will be a challenge with Peyton Manning because they're going to see a different Peyton Manning than they saw a year ago. Line. Coach, he likes to roll eight defensive linemen in the game just for the fourth quarter. So he's got fresh people. Andre Wadsworth, good sack on Scott Covington. Good smart move by Scott Covington. He couldn't get rid of this, but there's no sense in throwing it up. No, good decision just to tuck it and take the sack. It's five times Miami quarterbacks have been sacked this evening. Under two minutes to play. The players of the game. There's a flag goes down. Pass interference on the defense. Five foul. First down. Well, the visa player of the game from the Miami Hurricanes. Kenny Holmes, seven tackles, two sacks, and two breakups. And from Florida State, Warwick Dunn. As part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletic visa, proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these athletes. Well, 20 carries, 185 yards. Really good, uh, good pressure by Florida State tonight in the front four. They've been really been able to get to the quarterback tonight, sack-wise and pressure-wise. Swings it out to Trent Jones. Inside the 45. He lost the football, but the officials are saying he had stepped out of bounds, so the ball was dead. Another good decision by Scott Covington. Talked about the front four tonight being the key to the ball game. I think both front fours really had a pretty good evening. But Florida State, when you take those five sacks and two pressures out of that front four, especially Renard Wilson and Andre Wadsworth, uh, Peter Bowyer, they really got some play. And pressure on the quarterback. Mickey Andrews has to be happy with that tonight. He doesn't look happy, but he, he probably deep down inside, he's a happy man. Not well, going to show that. Well, this, this was a good test, and a lot of people passed it well. Covington's <laughs> pass complete. 
Magic Dutton breaks away, and he will score the touchdown. You see, I'm talking about release wise for Scott Covington. I mean, he really throws a nice football. He's a good release, good wrist action. And our man, our new man, Magic Benton, for a touchdown. Magic man. A real nice throw by Scott Covington. Holds that ball in there, good zip on it to Magic. And then the Magic getting in the end zone. But again, just another and a long list. You saw how well he ran. This game was never to put up a great athlete, does it? Put. Thirteen showing on the clock. It's now forty-one at seventeen. Well, don't forget, coming up next, the Residence Inn College Football Scoreboard. Colorado upset today. Northwestern wins again, and Eddie gets number four hundred. Yeah, congratulations, to Eddie Robinson. That's a that's a uh, great achievement. Mike Adamley, get your comments about this ball game tonight. From the first quarter to right now, uh, metamorphosis as far as the Seminoles are concerned, right? Well, again, we've talked about their talent and their ability to, uh, I don't know, play with anybody. Deion Sanders did give the pregame pep talk tonight. He and William Floyd did. They talked about, I'm talking to che Chuck Amato right now, about their experiences in this game. They knew they had to have it to make a run at the national championship and they are impressive and so are my wildcats man I, this is good this is a great day this is a great day and my brother vic who's an assistant coach at kansas great night for the adam lee family how, how did kent roosevelt do today you know high school i haven't talked to my dad yet but i'll do that as soon as this game is over <laughs> by the way speaking of those schools uh Mark Williams of Kansas, a quarterback 25 of 35 today, Mike. 299 yards and a touchdown. And uh, Drew Henry, KU, 23 carries, 137 yards, and two touchdowns for him. Some of the other top performances today are Bobby Hoyne, Ohio State, the 24 of 35, 354 yards and three touchdowns. And Terry Green, the wide receiver from Ohio State, nine Miami got a penalty against BPI two weeks ago because they looped that man right next to the kicker over to the other side, leaving only three on one side. That's a violation. Onside's kick is touched and now recovered by Florida State at the 45. E.G. Green, part of the Good Hands team, number 19, sophomore out of Fort Walton Beach, gets the recovery. Standing and cheering as the players on the sideline are turning and waving their hands, trying to get them fired up one more time. Bad Busby back in at quarterback. And that's Feaster. Takes it back in toward the boundary. A couple of yards in the play. And I'll tell you. The umpire got run over again, didn't it? This has been a tough night on the officials. Is that the umpire or the... That's the umpire, Ron Clay, just they're going to need the whirlpool after the game. <laughs> At their age, they do not come back as fast as these players. <laughs> you speak from experience, I know. Out some of the hurricanes on the sideline, and as we mentioned, this is an extremely tough pill to swallow. Never like to lose to the Seminoles, just as the Seminoles never like to lose to the Kings, but particularly by this margin. Feaster straight ahead, and that could be the last play of our ball game. As Gary Can comes up to make the tackle. Bobby Bowden looks up at the scoreboard. Teams are beginning to head on the field, and this one will go in the books as a solid win for the Seminoles of Florida State. That's the good of our ball game with the final score. Florida State 41, Miami 17. For Mike Gottfried and Mike Adamley, this is Ron Franklin saying so long from Tallahassee. The Residence in College Football Scoreboard is next. Let's join Mike Tirico. Mike.